All right, so the official Jets podcast back better than ever. We have a video this time. 2019 is upon us. Jets Bills is this Sunday, and we kick things off this week with Valentine Holmes, who's really the 11th practice squad player for the Jets. He's exempt because he's part of the International Pathway Program, which is why there are 11 practice squad players and not 10. This guy's a fascinating character. <laughs> he's done a lot of things early in his life and he was a star yeah in the rugby league yeah i don't think people understand that well ty montgomery understands it because (laughs) he he said that listen this i looked this guy up after the jets signed him and he's like michael jordan (laughs) okay so throughout the season we're kicking things off with val holmes but throughout the season we're gonna be taking fan questions once we know who's gonna be on the pod we'll tweet it out if you have questions tweet at one of us we'll ask the guest on the podcast, and where can you find the podcast? You didn't ask that, but I'm going to answer it for you. Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, really wherever you can find podcasts. Make sure to leave a review, and uh, is there anything else you want to add in here? No, let's bring in Val. All right. All right, so we're kicking off the official Jets podcast. Back officially in the 2019 season, Val Holmes, thanks for joining us. You're batting leadoff for us, so that means you're up first. Okay. And a lot there, of pressure. There, there's no pressure. <laughs> a lot of pressure, no pressure. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Mike. Yeah, no, thanks for coming on. Uh, I think fans have a thousand questions for you because your story is just so interesting. So I, I just kind of want to start things off by what gave you the itch to want to come overseas and pursue an NFL career? Yeah, it's um, it probably started back in 20, at the end of 2016. Um, myself and another player from rugby league uh, got the opportunity to train in L.A. in front of a few teams they put us through a pretty much like a a combine type um, training drills and stuff like that and our managers had organized all that stuff so I don't know how they um, you know got in touch with those guys and then um, we, that we put us through all that we've never done anything like that before and they were quite happy and pleased with how we you know took everything in and, and did the drills and executed and didn't make really any mistakes mm-hmm. um, and then obviously it's quite big in Australia you know a lot of us boys watch it you know everyone plays the the fantasies and and stuff like that so it's uh it's um quite big not just you know nfl you got you know the nba some people watch hockey mm-hmm. baseball um you know, american sports uh, did they select you to do that combine type training or did you and your um, body say we want to try to do this well i had no idea he was doing it my manager came to me and asked me if it was something you know, it was all paid for. It was all the trip mm. was everything uh, paid for, and I thought might as well as end of our um, the year for us. So we were on holidays, and um, it, was, it was always something that I would have been interested in doing. And um, you know, for the opportunity to come up, it was good, and you know, I got to kind of experience. It was just at a little high school in LA. Um, you know, I got to meet some of the scouts there. There was quite a few. I think there was over about 15 mm-hmm. different clubs there. So it was um, it's probably the most nervous I've ever been for something. And I've played in grand finals. I've played over 100 games back home, and this is, that was probably the most nervous I've been um, trying to perform in front of so, people with clipboards and someone I didn't know. So growing up in Australia, who were the guys that you looked up to in the sports world? And you said, hey, I watch a little bit of American football. Were there guys that you said, I, I really look up to that yeah. dude? Obviously, when I was a kid, I had, uh, my idols were in rugby league. Um, you know, I got to play alongside some guys that I never thought I would would have or, or and also play against but as I got older and, and it was just more so in the last few years um I've been watching you know NFL and, and basketball as any American sport closely more so NFL uh, and I love like all the obviously the receivers and running backs you know their their swagger and how they kind of play and um you know treat every game it's it's awesome to see they all got they're very talented and you know very special in their own kind of way but my favorite player I used to you know kind of watch his highlights before my games a few years ago, it was Odell Beckham. You know, when he first yeah. came on, I'm sure a lot of people would have done that. But um, he was probably my favorite player, and he kind of motivated me to try and make the move to um, come over and pursue something like this. But have you um, had a chance to talk to him at all? Nah, no, nah, not at all. It's, um, and I've obviously seen. I've been watching him very closely. Um, you gonna tell him anything pregame? We too? <laughs> <laughs> nah, probably not. Uh, listen, uh, Greens. I think this is a fascinating deal because mixed reaction from folks in Australia when you decided to make this attempt. You're going over to play with the New York Jets through the International Pathway Program right. because a lot of people are like, we want you back, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, so it was obviously uh, mixed emotions. There was a lot of people that were obviously excited and, and wanted to follow how I went because I was a fellow um, rugby league guy named Jared Hayne that kind right. of did the same thing. He, went, he, he was the 49ers yeah. running back, right? Yeah, and obviously he did quite well. So, um, you know, there was a lot of people that supported him and, and really, you know, wanted him to go well. And they probably had the same, you know, people wanted him to stay because he was really mm -hmm. good in, um, in our sport. So... You're obviously going to get guys that are disappointed in in, in you leaving, and um, you know wanting you to stay for the for that team. I was with the Cronulla Sharks, and there was a lot of fans that were, you know, not happy that I had left. But I'm sure over these past few weeks, they've been pretty excited. How difficult? Uh, how difficult was it for you to make that decision? Because I, I don't know if fans know this, but and I don't mean to make you feel uncomfortable, but you're a pretty big deal back home. So I, I don't know what the comparison would be for the opposite. Like if an if an NFL player decided to go play in rugby league but for you personally how difficult was it for you to say you know what I want to put away what I'm doing here right now even though I'm good at it and I want to try something yeah. that's different yeah it was very difficult I was um obviously I, was, I had felt like I had a pretty good come off a pretty good year and I was um coming off contract as well which you know obviously played a part in a little bit of it um but I had a you know the the team I was with, with Sharks they had offered me a pretty good deal to stay and but it was just something that I've you know I kind of live with is to not have any regrets and I've really felt like I strongly would have regretted not you know giving this up a crack or especially with the opportunity that came up with that pathway mm -hmm. the international pathway is you know I felt like it was just a calling for me and um, ever since I kind of did it so, um, you know I've been excited since being here and I'm um, pretty happy I made that decision coming over we'll jump back to football in a minute but uh what's the biggest differences as far as <laughs> living is concerned coming over here you're living in New Jersey right now but you've been to New York multiple times I know prior to this you've cited the beaches and the coffee <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, um, obviously Sydney's quite expensive as well so it wasn't too much of a of a change but I had my own place there so it was um, a little bit bit better at a car and stuff like that as well so it's um you know i don't really have all that kind of accessories at the moment but you know i live quite close to the facility at the moment and it's quite easy to to get back and forth but the most the most important thing is my coffee i, I really <laughs> do miss that and, and also bluestone have sent me some coffee beans because they must have seen i've said that a few times so it's a it's an australian cafe in uh, yeah. in new york city there and they're doing really well, so uh, they've sent me some coffee, and I've been having it at home. How so, many so. How many coffees do you have a day, ounces wise? Here, yeah, I probably have one or sometimes none, just because I isn't where to really find a nice one. But back home, so <laughs> two or three. Now, now Greens grew up in Manhattan, so he yeah. should have a couple places for. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I know. Where most of the well, I'm not a coffee Manhattan drinker are. though. Yeah. It, is that weird? I'm, I don't drink coffee. No, no, really. I've, I've met a lot of guys that haven't. So yeah. Each their own, I guess. Was it difficult oh, to get it. a? Uh, yeah, you you definitely need it. <laughs> what well, was it? Was it difficult to get adjusted to the driving on the opposite side of the road when you came here? Um, I haven't really. He okay. doesn't have a car, so, but oh, I okay. do understand it would be quite difficult. So how do you get to work every day? Um, I have his little scooter that I ride. I love that. Ty Montgomery, let me borrow. It's a, it's a bird scooter, <laughs> Hold on, whose so. is it? Is it Ty's? Or yeah, is it? yeah. It's is nice. it? It's one of the elect, like the bird yeah, scooters, yeah. or yeah, it's a bird scooter. It's electric one. It's, it takes like five minutes to get here. That's it's great. A little, uh, shortcut through the there's like these buildings, so you can just cut through the. Oh, uh, that's great. So you don't even need to go on the main road. Nah. No, he was actually riding that in the locker room the other day. Yeah. I think I saw you riding in the locker room. Yeah, I ride it straight to my straight to my locker. You, you know, I, I was looking, I was printing something earlier today. I saw someone riding a scooter out the window. It might have been you. It would have been me. What, would it be Blake Cashman? Because it, I thought for a second from a distance it might have been him too. He might have one. Were I mean, you wearing a hat on your way into one? Yeah. And it was definitely you. What yeah. does Jamal Adams has, have? Uh, he has like a motorcycle scooter looking oh, yeah. thing. Yeah, I think it's like an electric bike. Type yeah, yeah, it's more of an electric him. bike. You yeah. should ask him to borrow that one. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That. <laughs> so I, I want to, I mean, I want to touch on a thousand things, but in particular, you told me this when you signed that you basically casually ran the New York City Marathon. Yep. Like you didn't really train for it. You just kind of <laughs> said, okay, yeah, I'll do it. I'll sign up, and then you ran. 26.2 miles or whatever it is that's psychotic Valentine. Yeah. yeah it was um obviously my wife has has done it three or four times and their family are fitness freaks so they love running um and they've I've, I've supported them in the past three years and i thought i might as well give it a crack if i can if, if i don't <laughs> finish i could always just bail and 
you know, meet him at the end. But oh, like I said, I didn't train because I was in season the whole year, so <laughs> I couldn't really. You, know, you literally didn't have any program. <laughs> nah, well, I'm because I'm well, was with the Sharks at the time, so it's not like I can just run for 10Ks after a game or before a game because I'd be stuffed by the time we play the next week. So and I just, this was I just treated season? in season as my training for the marathon because I knew I was doing it from the start of the year. So, so New York City Marathon is October, correct? Yeah. Okay. So what kind? <laughs> what was your average mile? Um, well, no, I was and interested in four and a half hours. So what did that mean? I don't know. I didn't really. I was just like, did you run with? Yeah, if you, if you ask, uh, I'm not gonna try to do the yeah. math, but yeah, I've never I mean, run was, a marathon. I was just happy I finished it. I didn't. I did not think I was gonna, you know, even get close to to finishing it. But was your wife first. encouraging you, yeah, or yeah. was so she, she like, you're she never gonna be able to do this? Nah, she's real. <laughs> um, she really helped me out with it. She stayed with me the whole time. Um, she could have easily just ran off and finished it. What's lot, her best time? She's done it in like. Three hours fifty. Or oh something. my god! Yeah. Would you ever do it again? No, I already <laughs> told her it's the first and last. I mean, I'm happy I did it. You get like a gold medal and yeah, stuff it's like, like a that. lifetime achievement yeah, doing like that. Like how many pe- people can oh, say that? Okay, but it, so this is fascinating because it, it, I'm thinking of you and and you're a young guy, but I'm I'm saying bucket list already. You right? Already, yeah. You, oh, you, I already did the I, New York City Marathon. You have already played in the National Football League uh, preseason <laughs> action. I mean, what else is on that list? As far as Val Holmes is concerned, I don't know. It all seems to be in New York, though. But, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure. It's um, my wife and I always say we, we've lived a an extreme roller coaster lifestyle these past few years. Um, mm-hmm. You know, moving from a small town to Sydney, uh, I've made some rep teams there, and it's just been you know up and down. I've won a grand final, like I said. It's um, and she's been there through it all, and to move over to New York City and, and also do the marathon. It's, um you know, something that we, right. at this age, wouldn't think we'd be here. So it's, we're just trying to, you know, just have fun while we're, while we're doing this and, you know, and get one life to live, so why not? Let's talk about some of your countrymen, or <clears throat> country people, I should say. A lot of people say, that when we bring up rugby, I say, it's not rugby, it's the rugby league. Talk about the significant Oh, yeah, that, that, that's a very big deal. Because, yeah. People take that personally. People came at us. Like when you signed here and we put rugby, people said, no, 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 it has to be rugby league. And, you know, we had no idea. Yeah, so there's two major. There's a rugby union, which everyone calls rugby. Mm -hmm. It's like either 15 a side or um, there's sevens rugby. Um, The USA team's quite good at sevens, so that's probably why it gets a bit um, confused and lost in there. But uh, rugby league is only played in England and Australia and New Zealand, so... That's probably why it's not like worldwide like rugby mm. union is, and um, but I feel like it's getting there. A lot of people are starting to know it. Hopefully, a lot of people more in America know it now. And um, you know, obviously Jordan Mailata played for the plays for the Eagles. He mm-hmm. played rugby league as well. Um, and when I remember when he first you know got drafted and stuff, they're saying he's a rugby star in Australia, but it was rugby league again. <laughs> but Jared Hayne played rugby league. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like it's getting out there. It's um it's just obviously not worldwide like you know everyone knows the All Blacks. The South Africa team right. and all that, so that's all rugby union. They, they play fifteen aside, but you have thirteen aside, and mm-hmm. the rules are completely different. So, but you could do both. I mean, I used to play rugby union, yes, in school. Um, I haven't played in a while, but it wouldn't be as hard as the transition it is to to the NFL. So, how many of you, your current teammates fully understand? I know Ty Montgomery is one of them. Fully know about your success in Australia because I. I've, from where I sit, it comes off that you came in, you just didn't really say anything, that, and your teammates probably thought, oh, it's an Australian guy trying to come over, not realizing how successful you were overseas. So how many teammates fully know and understand? Well, I know our whole running back class know because Ty made the coach put my highlights up <laughs> in front of everyone. So Ty blew up your spot? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> He's been talking to a lot of a lot of the boys about it, and, um, you know, Frankie, Louvu knows, Harvey, uh, Bronson, they kind of, um, you know, know mm-hmm. who I am just a little bit, and obviously now, um, but it was more so just a running back class. I, I'm not really out here to tell everyone what I did. Yeah, um, which is very respectable, by the way. Yeah. I, I very much enjoy the the way that you came across that. Yeah, it was just, um, you know, I was obviously putting that behind me, and I just wanted to focus on this and, you know, try and make a – stamp in this game what was your favorite a moment over there in the rugby league probably winning the grand final for my team it was 
so since we've been, it was on our 50th year that the club's been, you know, alive or started, and it was on the 50th year we won. It was the first ever. Um, there's been like so many great players that have played at the club, and the team we had it was in 2016. We went, we won 15 games in a row, drew drew the 16th, and then lost the 17th, or whatever. But to win 15 in a row in that competition is is really hard to do. And I just felt like we had a great year that year. That was the year I played for Australia as well at the end of the year. Um, won a grand final. I was 21. It was yeah, that was probably my most favourite kind of memorable year or time. How much is that free form as far as that game is concerned compared to now you're over here in the NFL where everything's scripted. Yeah. Yeah. You go huddle up for yeah. 30 seconds before uh, a snap. Yeah, it's it's completely different. You obviously, you know, this is, uh, I feel like it's a real, real team sport. Every player literally needs to be in the right spot, needs to know what they're doing, needs to block the right person or, mm-hmm. you know, leave the right person or whatever and, um, that's how you kind of get down the field where in rugby league it's, um, you know, if you obviously there's some set plays and stuff you got to do, but, you know, one one or two players can kind of open up the match, um, you know, every now and then by just breaking the line and you can't, like, have blockers for you, so you've got to do it, you know, free freehand for yourself. you just got to try and create space and create, create a hole or a line break. Yeah. So uh, take us through... I guess the first time you put on pads in practice, you put on the helmet, you buckle up your chin strap, you go in the huddle, and you know the ball is coming to you. Like, what is going through your head? And you, you get hit and you go down or whatever, you stay up in training camp. And just take us through your head, your emotions, and the first time that you got a good pop, like, are, are you saying, like, what are you feeling at that yeah. moment? Well, it's actually the running back coach held me out for a little while just to make sure I understand the game, understand the, the play calls and stuff like that, which was really good. I needed that. Um, it was probably like a few weeks in where I got my first, you know, proper run in. I think it was, I don't know if it was 7-on-7 seven seven or if it was actually 11, I guess. At, um, when have been that first but. scrimmage, right? That Saturday scrimmage that you guys had out here? As far as oh, that was, taking that yeah, first hit. Yeah, that was probably pretty much my first hit. I mean, we've we've all used to like hold each other up right, like yeah. in the spring, but um, first contact session would have been that one and... You know, I definitely felt that. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously we've got to try and, you know, just get up at all times and, you know, because the defense obviously, you know, like to layer up if, you know, mm. they pull off a good hit. So I tried to just get up straight away, you know, thinking that it was nothing. So, But I definitely <laughs> felt it. How, how different is a hit, you know, that hit like that versus taking a big hit back home? Um, it's a little bit different only because – I didn't see that coming, so I had no idea he was coming. Yeah, right. Obviously, you lose a bit of peripheral vision, and he's just come flying in from the side, and I was all I was focused on was trying to get to the end zone. Um, but in rugby league and rugby union, um, you can kind of see who's coming to try and tackle you, mm. so you can either brace for it or you can evade him somehow, or you know you can prepare to get tackled. But in this in this league, it's uh, they're coming flying in. The safeties, if you're catching a ball facing your quarterback. The safety can come and just clean you up where you can't really do that in rugby league. It's right. got to be, you know, it's all kind of in front of you. You yeah. mentioned Ty a couple times, and you mentioned in your position coach, Jim Bob Cooter. Is Ty kind of taking you under his wings a little bit? Yeah, definitely, especially, in um, you know, in April in our spring camp. He was, um, you know, we were all living at the Ave together. Would He would help me out, like, pretty much every day at training. Even we did some study sessions at the Ave on our days off, so... He was one person that, you know, really, you know, helped me throughout this kind of transition into mm-hmm. the NFL with the Jets. And, you know, he's, um, he's helped me out a lot, whether it's because he's um, obviously transitioned from wing, uh, wing, sorry, receiver to, to running back, and he knows a lot. So he's, um, you know, helped me out a lot through this. And also, you know, the other boys have helped me out a lot as well. Le'Veon Bell, since Le'Veon Bell's been coming in, all he's been saying is lower your pads just because... Um, in the first few games, I was running quite high. And, yeah. You know, the players were getting under me, so I needed to lower my pads. And I felt like in that last game, I was doing that a lot. And that was just from these guys just, you know, keep getting into me and mm-hmm. help me out. Why the success in the passing game? Because a lot of guys, I would imagine, <laughs> might be making the transition and say, well, I can take a hand off and I'll try to find the hole. But you seem to be quite adequate as far as catching the ball out of the backfield. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I just, you know, a lot of the boys have mentioned that I've had, you know, that I've got good hands and and can catch a ball. And um, obviously the quarterbacks are quite real. They're quite good and they can put it on the spot for you. And um, so 
I don't know, I just feel like when I do get moved motioned out or if I am like kinda of in the slot or out in the, out wide, I just feel like you know, not you're not out there that often. I try mm-hmm. and make the most of every opportunity I get out there and um you know, I got pretty lucky that every time I was out there he threw it to me, so <laughs> um yeah, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, moving forward now, we talked a lot about lifetime goals and whatnot, but in terms of this year, you're the eleventh practice squad player, you have an exemption because of the, the international pathway program. What is your goal now as as terms of uh, as far as growth goes as an NFL player taking this year at, on the practice squad and trying to improve your game throughout this year before next spring and training camp and so on? Yeah, just the you know, I wanted to experience the whole season. Um, you know, obviously we go to home games and stuff and, and we'll watch all the games and just experience what it's like throughout the week taking it how serious it is because it's a, a real game it's not a, a pre-season game and um you know obviously get better at everything i've have to do um and just you know i'm just trying to kind of be on my feet around. i'm not looking too far into the future at what i want to do but um uh, you know i'm just i'm really excited to be here I'm very grateful that jets gave me that opportunity to to be on the practice squad and you know i'm just here for to support the boys and help them out wherever I can on the on the field to for that scout. How long team. have you and Natalia been together? You just got married in April, and um, what has she meant to you uh, throughout your life? Yeah, we've actually been together since high school, so it's um, high school sweethearts. As All right, call yeah. It. And, um, she's pretty much been my rock. She's you know been there through everything I've done from when I I was in under twenties. And through uh, when I started playing first grade, she was always there to support me, and um, and now she's over here on the other side of the world. She left their family, and we've got a little dog, and she was really, you know, sad to leave leave Leo. So, um, you know, she left her left everyone for me, and to obviously be here with me, and um, you know, she does things like that, which you know really helps me out in in you know everything I'm doing, and um, yeah, she's pretty much you know been the one that's kind of been been pushing me. Where did you guys go on your honeymoon before you came to New York? We actually haven't done a honeymoon as oh, of yet. Well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> well, we, well, when well, I got married, it was two days later. I came to training camp. Oh, so wow. Left so then where would you like to honeymoon? Yeah. Uh, we've been talking about going to the Maldives. Um, yeah, that sounds nice. That we've both wanted to do for a while, but we all know it's quite expensive. But we'll um, try to figure that out in the off season. I just want to – do you have anything else? I have one final question. If you Go, go for it. All right. This is this is kind of a random question. So I've been to Australia a couple times, and a lot of Australians have pretty good American accents. Do you have a good American accent? Uh, I don't have a good accent, but I've picked up a few, you know, words that the boys be saying, and it's only like little. Okay, kind of words, well, like what? Um, you know, some of the boys say "finna." <laughs> I, like, yeah. I, I know what that means, and. And it's uh, you know, I always hear it on movies or uh-huh. songs or some of that. So it's that's pretty cool. Um, shit, you put me on the spot. Um, you take your time. Yeah, I don't know. Just I used to live with a guy JJ Jones in the in the spring, and he's from Mississippi down south. So mm-hmm. he'd whenever he'd talk, I'd barely understand what he was saying. But <laughs> um, he'd say some some crazy stuff that you know would be you just see it in movies. Yeah. Because obviously we all watch um, you know American movies. It's um, quite cool to kind of be around it and. Mm-hmm. And all that, but um, maybe if you get me on, I might be able to. All right. Well, let, ne- next time I see you in the locker room, <laughs> yeah. you can uh, you well, can let me uh, know. Who's your favorite actor? You're talking about movies. Yeah. Oh, can't go past Denzel. Denzel. Yeah. Denzel. So I like you, him. So I like. Um, I wanted oh, to know. Shit. I wanted to know if you were going to Crow there, Russell Crow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've only seen a few of his movies. Okay. I don't really, watch too much of him. Yeah. There was someone else. Uh, Liam Neeson. Oh, okay. of course. You can't go wrong with him. No. Yeah. yeah. All right, Val. Appreciate your time. You, you did a great job as the first guest on the official Jets podcast in 2019. What do you think about New York? By the way, I did want to ask uh, One Jets Drive, a uh, tremendous job by our production mm-hmm. crew and yourself uh, as far as uh, your appearance on it. But uh, are you going to make stops throughout the year in the city? at a couple of these uh, rugby league uh, places where uh, fans gather and watch some games? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't mind it if If, if I time can. permits. Yeah if, yeah, if time permits, yeah, if I have a day off or whatever, or I can get in there. Like I said, I, I, it's like an hour train ride mm-hmm. from, from Madison, so uh, if, I'm, if I'm up for it or whatever. But, yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to kind of sit down and, 
you know, watch a few games with can, some fellow Aussies. Can fans buy you a pint, or they got to wait until the off season? <laughs> a pint? That's a big. That's a big drink, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I probably just can, can they up. buy you? <laughs> can they buy you a drink? How about that? I mean, if I if I'm allowed to, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Val, appreciate the time and best of luck this season. No worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Okay. So, how about Valentine talking about casually running? I knew you were going to bring that up. I, yeah, that's ridiculous. I, you run every day. No, Can no, no. Have... But I casually ran a half marathon a few years back. Okay. And my legs felt like cement <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> but that just speaks to the kind of shape a professional yeah. athlete is in. Okay, I was because I was going to ask. You frequently run with your dog. Yeah. But, so, but could you imagine just getting no. up and obviously he didn't just wake up and decide no. he's going to run. He's played in rugby league so the conditioning was there but to me that's still crazy listen his wife is obviously very driven anybody (laughs) who's run multiple marathons in their time that speaks to their mindset so that's a great pair and when your wife's running a marathon i gotta imagine you're saying to yourself i gotta finish (laughs) (laughs) yeah and and i will say that i thought it was i wonder how quickly Val's wife would have completed the marathon had Val not been there. Yeah. Because he did, I mean, based on what Val was saying, she is quite the runner. He didn't really jump on that, but I do want a bucket list from him at some point because, again, rugby league star, runs the New York City Marathon. Yeah. Now he's a member of the New York Jets. It's a hell of a life. Yeah, I feel like I'd like to accomplish something of similar magnitude for just one of those things, not let alone three, before the age of 25. Yeah, and I know I feel bad for some folks over there because if you're a fan of the Sharks, right? My friend, my my friend, true story. I didn't say this to him, but my friend is a fan of the Sharks. And yeah. when Val signed here, he texted me immediately and was like, "You got to watch out for this guy." Da 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 da. He's part of my favorite team. It hurts you because you know. You, let's bring Michael Jordan back into the conversation by saying, you know, he oh, took, that's a good he, 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 yeah. he took some time off after his father's. Uh, tragic death, and then he went to minor league baseball. Right. So if you're a Bulls fan, <laughs> you love Jordan, but you're like, come back to the Bulls, right? I, which he ultimately did. I think that's a – to me, the first thing that stuck out in my mind to try to compare – I didn't do it – was Andrew Luck. Somehow compare that situation to Valentine's. It's completely different. Yeah. But Michael Jordan, that's a very good example. So I'm glad you brought that up. And – Again, please leave us a review. The official Jets podcast is back for 2019, better than ever. You got questions, we'll answer. We're going to have awesome guests along the way. I'm excited. No doubt. No doubt. Stay tuned. Leave us a review. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you want to find a podcast, find us, and we'll see you next week.